As you can immediately tell from its DVD cover, Food Fight is one of the worst animated films ever made. So what better way to start this series? And this isn't some low-budget independent film or a student experiment. This was meant to be the real deal. It featured the voices of Charlie Sheen, before he became a meme. I'm by winning. I win here and I win there. Now what? Wayne Brady, Eva Longoria, Christopher Lloyd, and Hilary Duff. Remember her? Me neither. And the original budget for this film was around 50 million dollars. Really shows, doesn't it? What does show is the film's troubled development history, which is arguably far more interesting than the film itself. Threshold Entertainment began production in the early 2000s, but the film was eventually released in 2012. At some point, hard drives containing unfinished assets from the film were reportedly stolen in what the director called an act of industrial sabotage. Personally, I think it was some unsung hero trying to do the world a favour and make sure that this film never saw the light of day. Even after this, Threshold managed to get $20 million more funding, but kept missing their deadlines for release until eventually the investors got understandably upset, and an insurance company stepped in to get the film finished and released as quickly and cheaply as possible. This rush job is obvious from even a momentary glance at the film itself. It just looks awful. Textures are bland and ugly, character models are bland and ugly, backgrounds and settings change between scenes even just minutes apart from each other, the special effects are terrible, like PowerPoint levels of terrible, film assets are quite obviously copied and pasted, sometimes with no effort to distinguish them or animate them differently. This also applies to the background extras, who are clearly just stock characters thrown in en masse in order to fill up the screen regardless of whether that makes sense. Like in this shot where you can see five identical extras, who are quite obviously Jewish for some reason, and here there's two identical guys doing exactly the same animations right next to each other. Come on! Oh, and the animation is awful. Faces don't do what they're supposed to. Expressions are either lifeless or completely exaggerated. Sunshine in particular is very unsettling. And let's not even talk about the extras. The same goes for the lip syncing. It's all over the place. Both of these are due to Threshold's outsourcing of the face and lip syncing animation to another company, whose technology was so limited that the actors had to stare straight ahead or keep still. Hence this. By contrast, movements are weirdly jerky. Characters wave their arms, jump and spin around for no reason. Dude, can't handle it. Unplug this bastard, yeah. Daredevil Dan is a particularly bad example. Most of the time, it looks like he's been doing a lot of crack. This is probably due to the director's far-out decision to emulate the squash and stretch look of the Warner Brothers cartoons, with all their exaggerated movements and expressions, but using motion capture in the process. And it just doesn't work. And who did this motion capture? Charlie Sheen. I was banging seven gram rocks and finishing them because that's how I roll. I have one speed, I have one gear. Go! Quick movements like snapping fingers or jazz hands just look really weird or blurry. Oh god, that's terrible. And on top of all that, certain shots are drawn out just to pad out the film as much as possible. All that could be explained away, if not forgiven, by the insurance company's insistence on shitting this movie out no matter the cost. But that doesn't explain the absolute piss-poor excuse of a story. The writing is ridiculous and nonsensical, which we'll see when we go through the movie itself. And for a film that's meant to be a comedy, it's completely unfunny. The writing team's idea of a joke is to make a pun. For crying out loud. Preferably food-related. I had a raisin for every time I've heard that one. Puns can be fine if used sparingly, but this goes completely overboard. Four carrots! Four carrots! I can't. I failed her. Get a shelf life! I like Better go easy on the potato juice before you get... <laughs> ...chip-faced. Time to banana split out of my club. Holy chips! Riga Moldus has set in. Let's snap, crackle, and pop out of here. Let's strawberry jam out of here. And sometimes they just don't make sense. I'm gonna pop your corn, lady. Or they take a famous movie quote and make it about food. Of all the produce bars and all the supermarkets and all the world, she had to walk into mine. Don't cry for me, Charlie Tuna. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a spam. What's the point in doing this? The kids aren't gonna laugh because they won't get the reference. And adults won't laugh because it's not funny! And to make things worse, they reuse the same jokes over and over again. It wasn't funny the first time, why would it be funny the third time? And where there is original humour, most of the time it's incredibly low-brow. 
Don't get me wrong, I love a bit of lowbrow humour, but the execution is so shoddy that it just falls flat. Like here, when a character gets stuck in another character's ass, despite the fact that that character was wearing trousers. There's also a reliance on stereotypes, because this was written when no one gave a shit. Effeminate gay lumberjacks. Mexicans. Me comprendo big time heavy. Chinese. But I, a kung to fu, am innocent. And worse. And then there's all the really inappropriate stuff, but I'll save that until later. There was one time I laughed with this movie, rather than at it. But that was just because of the absurdity of it. Ah! I'm fine, nobody saw that. <sighs> but the rest of the time, it's more like this. Well, you have to help me, Dex, before I go bald! Five different people wrote this story and script, and this is the best they could do. Probably as a result of the lacklustre material, the voice acting is so-so at best. Charlie Sheen in particular seems like he was forcing himself through it. I don't understand. I don't know if I can cut the mustard anymore. Yeah, it was a joke. Yes, because it's so absurd. But when you've got a, you know, when you got a highly evolved brain and you're trying to like roll out your humour, you can't, I guess, that's on me. And in places, the quality of the voice recordings noticeably drops. Am I wrong to hear you sing with feeling? I am not the brand X icon. Je suis Francois Fromage. Even when spoken by the same characters in the same scene, ah! I'm fine. Nobody saw that. <sighs> some lines sound like they were recorded over the phone. All the lightning rods are in place. I guarantee it. Well, pretty guaranteed. I mean, it's almost guaranteed. I can't guarantee it. <laughs> Oh, come on, that's funny. No, that's funny. Let's not lose our senses of humour. Maybe the actors very wisely refused to set foot in the studio again. As for the rest of the sounds, the soundtrack is generic and cheesy. And the Foley and sound effects are ripped straight from a stock library. Okay, Chris, you've been shitting all over this film, but what actually happens in it? That's a very good question. I'm still not sure myself. It all seems like some fever dream. But you better bang some seven gram rocks and strap yourselves in because I'm about to show you. I'm going to spoil the movie, but you're not actually gonna watch it, right? So this is how the film begins. Jesus, setting the bar high. And we see the supermarket where this film is set. Just closing up. Nothing much happens around here after dark. So this film's gonna be really boring. Oh wait, it was foreshadowing! How clever! By night, the supermarket turns into a city, inhabited by the icons, or Ikes, of the various products. It's our world. It's my life. Oh. We see a bunch of different characters, and what do you notice? They're all product mascots, as in real product mascots. In fact, this entire movie is one giant product placement. The mascots are even featured as named characters in the film's trailer. Charlie the Tuna. Watch the tail. Oh, Mrs. Butterworth. Take that. Call it cross-promotion if you want, but this amount of product pushing in a children's movie is ridiculous and exploitative. See, there's Mr. Clean, and the joke is that he gets dirty. He's not even in the film for two seconds, and they make that joke. And then they make it again. Twice. And now we're introduced to the protagonist, Dex Dog Detective, played by Charlie Sheen. Listen up, fat cat burglar. But but he's not a he's not a cat. <laughs> it's just you and me, fat cat. Fat cat, fat cat, fat cat. I'm sending you to the cooler, burglar. I'm gonna kill you! Oh wow. That seems just a little bit uncalled for. Dex pops the balloon and sends the burglar flying. We never see him again, so I'm guessing he died? That wasn't flying! That was falling with style! Dex saves the, um, whatever those things are. And now the hamsters fall down? Why there? That doesn't make sense. So here we meet Dex's sidekick, Daredevil Dan. The film's... <sighs> comic relief. And he's meant to be black. He's voiced by Wayne Brady, he employs stereotypically black mannerisms. Relax, bro. And he's made of chocolate. This is the <laughs> fuck? And they make a lot of jokes about that. How about some chocolate frosting? Okay, pal. 
Is your chocolate chip? And she's got a real sweet tooth for chocolate! We also meet Hilary Duff's character and Dex's love interest, Sunshine Goodness, who's playing with some kids who look like they've seen some truly terrible things. And that melon was clearly added on top of everything else. You can see it pass through a kid's head. And there's a panty shot. Not that I was looking. So Dex tries to propose to Sunshine, but his idiot friends keep cock-blocking. Dan crashes his plane, so Sunshine goes to check on him. And Dex doesn't go with her, for some reason. In the very next scene, hours have passed, Sunshine has disappeared, and Dex is with Dan by his crashed plane. But they're in the exact same location as the previous scene. You see what I mean about the plot and everything being nonsensical. Chill, dog. You can pop the question tomorrow night. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't you f***ing say it. It ain't like it's the last time you're ever gonna see sunshine again. Six months later. You little s***! Back in the supermarket. <laughs> Ugh. This is Mr. Clipboard. And that's his actual name in the credits. A representative of Brand X, played by Christopher Lloyd, who does a pretty good impression of himself. <laughs> Customers won't know how they live. Without brand X. He's brought in some Brand X products, but there's no space. <laughs> well, that wasn't very nice. Survival of the fittest, lad. Something tells me that you would not do well under that rule. Dex trips balls and then gets woken up by Dan. After Sunshine's disappearance, Dex has hung up his detective hat and now owns a nightclub. But now, brother, you got a club to run. Dan Cat calls a passing woman. Oh, Mama Sita! Yo, sweet cakes! Oh, nice packaging! Because street harassment is hilarious. Then he crashes his plane again because he's a moron. Dex walks to his club alone and he meets this thing? Cheezel, who looks like sculpted diarrhea. He's got what you need. And for some reason, he's always got some living animal under his coat. Sick bastard! You despise me, don't you? Sweet dreams, children. Cheezel gets hit by a train, and Dex just walks away like a complete psychopath. Dines for fools. <laughs> Dex arrives at his club, closely followed by Polar Penguin. Guess what he makes jokes about? Is it just me? Or is anyone else cold? And then they beat the joke into oblivion! You're a f***ing penguin. You're supposed to be cold? But you're not in the freezer right now, so you'd be hot, surely. I hate this character. I'd rather be buried alive with Jar Jar Binks than have to listen to this f***ing penguin again. You've got a friend! This is why I don't go to nightclubs. And in walks Lady X, the Ike for Brand X, played by Eva Longoria. The Ike for the chips that got smashed earlier takes offence. Is it really my fault you have inferior packaging? <laughs> do, do you get it? Do you get it? It's because they're food. And the title of the movie is Food Fight. Get it? <laughs> oh, come on, that's funny. No, that's funny. After an incredible fight scene, Dex kicks everyone out, and Lady X goes off with Dan. But then she comes right back, and... Oh my. She really aggressively tries to give the dog a bone. I'm looking for a guy. About your height. Okay, now we've got to talk about how inappropriate this movie is. Occasional adult jokes can work quite well in kids' movies. Do you think maybe he's compensating for something? <laughs> But this film turns it up to 11. It warms my heart the way you love my raisins, tough guy. I like to butter your muffin! Here's good news. I am the weasel for you. Dance your man! Melts in your mouth, not in your hand! What can I say? Chicks dig chocolate. So what happened to Dan? He already eat through to his hollow center? Oh, but being filthy can be loads of fun. There are some stains you can never wash out. I want to scrub your bubbles, Dex. I never even got a chance to play lick the icing with sweet cakes. And with you on my back yet? Not that I mind that. Uh, are those melons real? Pudding and strudel is what I think about, Darth and myself. Size only counts for men. I sincerely hope not. And then there's this character, who manages to make perfectly normal sentences sound so utterly wrong. Lovely word. Tomb. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, and no, it's not Tim Curry. He's a sadomasochistic pervert. There's no way around that. More fun than a spanking. I love a good violation. I love anything to do with violation. <laughs> pulverizing! <laughs> I love pulverizing. I think I just wet myself. It feels rather nice. 
Remember, this is a kids movie. Again, the kids aren't going to laugh because they won't get the jokes, and the adults won't be laughing because they'll be horrified that their kids are watching this. Not that letting your kids watch this isn't tantamount to child abuse anyway. Anyway, there's a commotion outside. Apparently, every Ike that was in the club was murdered. This means that the products also die because... We're the soul of our products. Without us, they're gone. Real fast. Which makes no sense, but okay. Looks like all these poor Ikes were rubbed out. Please don't call it that. Looks like all these poor Ikes were rubbed out. Lady X blames it on Dan. Conveniently, Brand X shows up with replacements. Dex gets suspicious and sets off to find Dan, who has gone missing. I just can't throw in the paper towel on Dan. Lady X shows up with her henchmen and promises to restore order. Security around here! You stole the train or... And they're Nazis. All icons must attend or face the penalty of elimination! That's just lazy villain design. Again, the kids aren't going to get the reference, and parents will think, what are Nazis doing in this family-friendly adventure comedy? Cheezel impersonates Dex's penis, before telling him that Dan was seen at Lady X's home. There are some stains you can never wash out. Cheezel doesn't bother to move out of the way of a wrecking ball, and Dex just walks away again. He is one cold motherfucker. Dex goes to see Lady X, and they have an atrocious dance sequence. A boat falls down, because why not? I want to know how you rubbed out all those Ikes last night. Stop calling it that. After Dex rejects her again, she knocks him out and throws him in a dryer with Dan. Except the dryer has a hologram inside it? And a fire? That is not how dryers work. She has these, these giant flying mother XL bites that slaughtered every Ike in sight! But there were thousands of people outside that club. How did nobody see anything? But they didn't rub me out because- Seriously? Stop. They're building an entire army of robotic exobites. What is an exobite? Why are they called that? And how did Dan know they were called that? I need answers. The Nazis go around murdering Ikes, because this is a kid's movie. Dex brings the scent that he took from Lady X to the Nose Doctor. Why? Why, Brand X? Why? No, 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 come on, come on. Why not, uh, let's see, you, Dr. Pepper, Dr. Scholes, Dr. Feel Good! Anybody doc, doc, but doc, me, yes! Yeah. Why did they make the character with the huge nose embody a neurotic Jewish stereotype? Did they not see anything wrong with that? As if to deflect that criticism, at the end of the movie we find out that Dex is Jewish. Dex is Jewish? It's not relevant to the plot at all. Did they just put it in as a joke? Yeah! Anyway, they discover that Brand X is toxic and addictive, so Dex decides to hack into the store computer to order a product recall. Now they're in the supermarket during the day, so they can come out in daytime? I don't get it. But unsurprisingly, there aren't many extensive wikis dedicated to cataloguing food fight lore. A fat Nazi has followed them, somehow? They fall on a cart with some- No, Larry, I am not lying! I, I can't do this. I, I, I'm done. Dex swoops in on a soda bottle, which is closed? So how is he doing that? You need to warn the other rights, Brand X is behind the rub out. For the love of God, stop! We're reintroduced to this Bat character, who appeared briefly at the start of the film. Is that the enticing scent of rich, creamy chocolate? Are you chocolate? Are you made of chocolate? Really? And who is very, very inappropriate. Do you work out? I use the Thighmaster. And I know what you're thinking, and no, it's not William Shatner. Dex discovers that Brandex ordered Sunshine to be recalled. See, here she is. And she's not a cat. So why is she a cat here? And what do cats have to do with raisins? Ah! Dex orders the product recall of Brandex, while Lady X addresses the gathered Ikes. We must send all the undesirables where they belong. Do you see an Ike with an inferior product? Turn in the undesirables! Jesus Christ, could they be any more blatant with the Nazi imagery? One star, one X! One star, one X! Oh, the rock music starts, so you know shit's about to go down. Reporting for duty as infected by my friend! Oh, f off. The Nazis and the Ikes have a song off, whatever that's called, and it's horrific. <laughs> The mouths are completely out of sync, and the dancing is all over the place. The hamsters try to start a mosh pit, and the Jewish nose doctor starts break dancing. What? Dex rallies the Ikes to fight the Nazis. I'm with you guys, but could somebody please turn up the heat? Fuck off. So the Nazis attack and are ambushed. Food. Fight! 
Get it? Because... Of course you do. All the food explodes dramatically. Look how much damage those pancakes do. <laughs> Michael Bay would be creaming his pants right now. Get it? Creaming? There's a minute of constant shots like this, and then another even longer battle scene, which is just as bad. In case you needed reminding that this is a kid's movie, exobites fly out of Lady X's vagina. There's some more breathtaking action. No! Yes! That's the best thing to happen in this movie so far. Dex traps and murders General X, who is completely alone. Oddly, hmm, I suddenly have the urge for some beef stew. Dex's plan is to have the Ikes make lightning rods to destroy the Nazis. Dex sends Cheezle down the sewers, because he's literally a piece of shit. Cheezle destroys a power line and kills the fat Nazi. Thankfully, that's the last we see of him. Seriously, he just disappears. No explanation, no closure. Not that anyone's begging for it. So the destroyed power line sends off an electrical charge, which starts a massive electrical storm, which destroys every building without a lightning rod. But that's not how electricity works? <sighs> that plan is about as intelligent as this frog. Yeah, and, uh, who's Benjamin Franklin? Dex sneaks into the Brandex headquarters. Well, that was easy. And suddenly Sunshine's here? And what clever and original ploy do you think our hero will use to free her? Yeah... That trips up the pervert, but Sunshine doesn't move at all. Well, this isn't very much fun, is it? <laughs> and now the clipboard guy shows up? So humans can enter the Ike City at night? Does this supermarket not have a night shift? Or has no one ever broken in? What is this film's logic? What is this film? They trip the clipboard guy, even though there's no way they'd be strong enough to do that. <laughs> Turns out Lady X was the clipboard guy all along. And she was also the record prune lady from earlier. Quick trip to Brazil for a little plastic surgery. How could she have gotten to Brazil? Who would have performed the surgery? I have to assume it was either a serial killer or a brony. Dex quickly sums up what the hell just happened. So you built yourself a human robot and recalled sunshine, then you stole her essence to make your elixir for Brand X. How did you get in and out of the store? You're an Ike. Very, very good question. Humans! When you look like this, you can get them to do anything. But you're like six inches tall! And how did you get out of the store to get the plastic surgery to look that way in the first place? Who the f wrote this? Oh yeah, I forgot. F morons! Sunshine randomly teleports in and Dex teleports out. Oh boy, this fight is gonna be epic, isn't it? Oh, look at you! That did not disappoint. Gross! So the lesson here is, if you're ugly, f**k YOU! The fox shows up late and Dex compliments him anyway. But why? He waited it out while the Nazis were murdering everyone. Fucking collaborator. And all the dead Ikes are brought back to life. I knew you'd save me, friend! Shit. I'm just gonna leave this frame up here for a few seconds. Okay. Dex finally pops the question, they get married, there's some more awful dancing, and then the movie ends. Oh no, just to rub salt in your fucking eye, there are post credit scenes. Seven of them. Each more unfunny than the last. I'm warm! I'm warm! Yes, that's exactly what you should say to a lady. Final verdict, just to sum up the obvious, Food Fight is an unfunny, inappropriate, insensitive and aggravating piece of trash. It's a perfect example of why certain people should not be allowed to make movies. You need to be on Charlie Sheen's level of drug use to be able to enjoy this. But you want to know the funniest thing about this movie? Food Fight's director and Threshold's CEO said that the film would help make them the next generation Pixar. <laughs> Oh, that was a lot longer than I was originally intending, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, feel free to check out some of my other videos. Subscribe and click the notification bell for future content. Help me grow the channel by telling your mates. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter if you fancy. And until next time, peace.